Okay, good morning, everybody. Hi. Super early. <laughs> We're having breakfast. Um, so, uh, sorry, I was gonna show you how to use the pen tool. So I've already got it like halfway done um, so that you don't have to watch too long of it. Uh, but this is the thing, you open up your image, right? And um, you go to, down here to pen tool. It looks like this old fashioned calligraphy calligraphy pin go to pin i don't know what free pin does frankly i'll google it i don't know but i just go to pin and then um oops i'm gonna get rid of the anchor point um and then up here it'll say it'll default to shape you don't want shape mm -mm. no you want path and then it should say make selection right here and the fill will if for some reason it um defaults to red you don't want that either so change that to that red X, which just means clear. Um, so the way that anchor points work on pen tool is that you click these points and it should connect to the last point. Now, um, if you push delete, it's gonna delete the entire path, but don't worry, cause you can just go back up here to the history. Um, now, sometimes I need to go back and click on the last anchor point I made to um, keep it straight for some reason. I don't know exactly why, but anyway. Um, most of the time it's pretty straightforward. You're just clicking and it will, you know, just keep connecting to the last one that you did. I mean, you know, if you make a mistake, no biggie, you just go back onto the history palette and go back one anchor point. Um, the only thing is, uh oh, don't sneeze cereal, dude. <laughs> no, I can't have milk all over me right now. Uh, this is Gertrude. You want to say hi again, bud? <laughs> uh oh. What? I just heard the other one. Hey, bud, I'm in the middle of making my um video. Is she was screaming? Oh, oh, honey, I was just trying to let you sleep. Uh, hang on. It's, it's I'm going to try. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, okay. Now, right there, you see how I, I did this, and it's just like it's too much of a straight line, and that's a curve. So you can make like a curved anchor point. Um, you, if you move the, the point, it'll, um, it'll curve it. But when I just did that, it's like, I kind of felt like um, it was curving the wrong direction. By the way, you, you have to move it when you click it. You can't move it after you click it. Um, and then what I usually do is I click right back on that blue thing again, right in the middle, so it knows what the actual point is. You don't want it to add on to the little white circles. You want it to add to the blue one. Give me a sec. I'm almost done, okay? I'm almost done. Okay, and then over here again, we got like a curve. Um, you know I'm not it's not the best, but it works. Yeah, but hush. Um, here's another curve. I don't know. Yeah. Kind of awkward, but kind of works. It's better than, you know, just making it like super straight. Um, I think I decided that I don't care about that stuff. I'm just going to cut it off. Well, dirty, dirty. Just love it. Gertie, I'm almost done, bud. Okay, so the fun part is when you get to the top, you get to go back, and this is this is the most satisfying part. When you click on this, the point that you started on, it completes the path. So right now in the history palette, it's a like closed path. If it doesn't say that, there's probably something wrong, and you'll find out really quickly that there's something wrong. Um, all right, so now I close the path. Now I want to make it, instead of a path, I want it to be a selection. So I'm gonna go over to paths, and down here there's this little, see one of these, this little square thing, I'm gonna push selection, 
Okay, so now it has the little squiggly lines that make a selection. Um, okay, so next up though, I'm gonna change this selection just a little bit to make it softer around the edges. And you probably should do this with any selection, but um, whatever. Um, I'm gonna go, cause I should have done that with a magnetic lasso tool too. Uh oh. What is it doing? What is it doing? I don't like that. You made it sit down at the watch. No. Nope. I'm gonna go back. You know, Curdy, that's like really great. Okay, let's do a refined edge and see if that gets me that menu I want. Nope. You know what though? This is a neat tool. Um, I think what you would do here, that one's the difference. this is like a mask mode. You could go in here. That's you know I'm recording a video, right? I know, but you're recording in the early morning. Is it taking too long, honey? Yeah, and if you have a battery, you're recording in the early morning. Okay. How to deal with that. Um, all right, I'm sorry. So I found the thing I wanted to show you. Uh, adjustments. Oh my gosh. Select. Okay, here it is. Select modify. I would go to feather and do like, if you do too much, it just looks stupid. It's like too many, it's like too soft, you know? maybe five to eight, but it'll just kind of buzz the edge a little bit so that it blends in better with the thing you're gonna be putting it on. Um, okay, so now my selection's done, and I'm gonna go back to this and see the whole thing. I mean, what do you call this? I don't know what that is, it's the zoom tool, duh. Usually if it says negative or positive, you have to push either command or control or whatever, and it'll, it'll switch to the other. Um, I just like just pushed it once, and for some reason it's going in like three. Okay, so I have a selection. Now, um, this background's all white, so you would think that means it's see-through, but it isn't. All that whiteness is going to cover up anything you put it on top of, right? So I'm going to go to select inverse because that selects the white part like the outside part and then I'm going to go to edit cut and now I get that nice gray and white check background which means it's clear I'm going to go to select deselect and then I'm going to save this as a PSD I'm saving it as PSD so that I can use it in photo P to make my collage. I don't know, then honestly, yeah, it could work to save it as a JPEG, but I don't know. I just don't want to take the chance that it will misbehave for any reason. If it's PSD, then you know it'll edit like a PSD. It'll edit like a photo P document or a Photoshop document. All right, and I'm just gonna make sure that I save this somewhere where I can find it, and that's it, okay.